Hello and welcome to another episode of The Book Binge. This time we are quickly just doing an intro for my bookshelf tour 2024 update. If you haven't been around long enough or you weren't aware last year in 2023, I did do a bookshelf tour of sorts. It was pretty rough. It wasn't great. I even forgot a shelf that I had to include after the fact uh, in the editing process, which was really fun. <laughs> Not really fun, actually. Uh, and then I shortly thereafter rearranged my office i moved into a new bedroom and so had to move stuff around in here to be a little bit more to my liking you're already seeing a little bit of the new change in the background right now but what this video will do is take you through all of my bookshelves as they are right now there are a couple things that are actually back ordered that i uh, was supposed to have in the video today that just didn't arrive in time shipping reasons i live in the middle of nowhere it's liable to happen uh, but otherwise, this is the bookshelf tour for 2024. Maybe I'll continue doing these on a regular basis, regular-ish basis, depending on how quickly things expand or if I have to add new shelves or whatever. But as of right now, this is, this is the way things are going to be for the next little while. So I hope you enjoy the tour. To start off, we're going to have a reveal from behind the chair for the stuff in front of the camera. You'll see that I've changed my... You know my little stuffed animal collection a little bit to be a bit more visible behind my head and to have my leather bound collections up there just like i used to and also my uh non bookshelf actually there's some notebooks but mostly games and movies the first real shelf in this tour is once again my Viticus lore collection with a couple non-lorian legacies books but most everything else being within that series it's a favorite of mine moving down we have Redwall by Brian Jacques, a collection that a couple of my friends have said makes them want to have the full collection just because of how nice these all look on the shelf. And then uh, the less nice looking full Michael Crichton collection. In fact, the reason why these aren't actually a little bit different is because of the height of the shelf at the bottom not being high enough for the hardcovers, strangely enough. Moving over, we have my shelf that used to be a collection of mishmashed nonsense, but now we have big collections like Shakespeare, Narnia, short stories from Hodgson. There's a blank space to hold a couple more. You have House of Leaves there. You have In Search of Lost Time and, you know, Fall of the Roman Empire. Some pretty big brain stuff there. Next up is one of my favorite looking shelves. It is a collection of Legacy Trilogy, a lot of John Gwynn stuff, which, yes, I know Bloodborne or Bloodsworn does not go in between a Blood and Bone and Faithful and the Fallen. It just looked better that way to me. And then there's Lycanius over there. I just really like the way Orbit paperbacks look. Moving up, we have a slightly rearranged Sun Eater shelf with all of the UK covers and whatnot uh, hidden a little bit where my head would be in video. Moving into Anderita collections. And then, of course, the much coveted US hardcovers, which most of these I collected before they went out of stock. Lucky me. Moving up, we have something a little bit different. Just the Dark Tower, because I really like that series, right next to some Tolkien, a big Tolkien collection, most of it. In fact, a couple copies of Lord of the Rings, there's The Hobbit, and then some other extra stuff as well. And then we have my Dune hardcovers over beside them. Moving up, we have, still at the very top, Wheel of Time. I actually messed around with moving these down to a couple of the other shelves, these hardcovers, and I never actually ended up working out. I didn't think it looked right anywhere besides the top shelf for some reason moving up we have a small collection of non-fiction books mostly writing related some of my mythology stuff the adan trilogy one of my favorites from 2023 and then of course the wheel of time compendium to keep them you know contained moving over we'll see a couple of my stacks of mass market paperback series just because they actually look pretty nice over here these didn't move from where they were for the last few months Outlander and Malazan both collected here, just stacked on top of each other because it actually looks pretty neat in my opinion. Moving down, we have my collection of Penguin Deluxe art covers. Well, they're actually paperbacks, but they have French flaps, so they kind of feel like, you know, somewhere in the middle between paperbacks and hardcovers. Some favorites, a lot of books I haven't tried yet, some books that I was a little bit more mixed on in one way or another. Moving down, we just have my plain Penguin Classics collection. You'll probably wonder why there's a blank space over to the side. Well, this is because I plan to collect a couple more Penguin Deluxe 
uh, versions and then of course a few more normal penguins as well so that's where those will go moving down is a little bit of move over from where some of my old paperbacks were on that orbit shelf you know five warrior angels tad williams stuff and then a assorted collection of kind of weird and out there books solenoid terranostra infinite jest you know just some books that didn't really fit anywhere else but because of their height i put there this bottom shelf over here is mostly a YA collection, but also with some other stuff that doesn't really fit anywhere else. We have many of my favorite books are on the shelf between 39 Clues, 127 Hours, Phoenix Island are all great. But then there's also some Stephen Pressfield and my first couple manga collections over here as well. Moving over, we have just a tiny bit of a Stephen King shelf. Without the Dark Tower to hold them, it looks like a very small collection, and it really is. I haven't read much of him yet. Over here is just my little collection of Harry Potter. Up on this shelf, we have my Shauna Lawless books with a little gap there for the third book coming later this year. Then we have a couple uh, shorter or YA series. We have you know, Vampire Academy, one that I actually read in middle school and think is actually unironically pretty good in memory at least what i read there's the witcher which i haven't tried yet and some michael j sullivan which i also haven't tried yet sorry for the angle on the video the angle was a little bit awkward to try to film this portion up another shelf we have Levin thumps a collection that i've had for a good long while uh that i still want to get back and actually read more of uh seven realms which is a series that i actually really want to try a favorite of mine with the Underline Chronicles. There's also Fable Haven and Ranger's Apprentice. Book one of Ranger's Apprentice is actually at a friend's house right now. He's borrowing it, so that's why there's a little missing book in there. Moving up to, I believe, the top shelf of this section. Actually, no, it's just the next shelf. Is another YA middle grade book, Wonderstruck, one that I recall fondly. But the rest of the shelf is dedicated to Rick Riordan, a favorite author of mine. I just thought that rearranging the shelf a little bit to make it look a little bit more visually interesting was the way to go, so that's what I did. It happened to leave a gap that Wonderstruck fit. At the top shelf of this is my Brandon Sanderson collection, mostly of leather bounds, but they're all premium hardcovers in any case. Mistborn, Warbreaker, all of that fancy stuff, the four secret projects, which are all Pretty nice and then the way of kings over on the side here i'll end up putting the sunlit man in and putting words of radiance up there at some point as well up here is my little mass market collection of uh lord of the rings because that's where it fits then over here is just a bunch of non-fiction mostly political books that actually got me back into reading a few years ago which is kind of a strange occurrence but that's how things went over on the other side of the room, we will start over here with a little bit of more of a sorted collection. This shelf is mostly random stuff, stuff that didn't fit elsewhere. Otherwise, we have a bunch of stuff that's actually pretty similar height. McCarthy, uh, uh, Bound in the Broken, that's what that is called. And then some Tchaikovsky as well, just kind of sitting there because that's where it fit. Down on the shelf below, we have a few more classics inclusions that, again, didn't really fit anywhere else, so I just kind of put them over here for now. There's Anne McCaffrey over here as in a small assorted collection. Then we have Larry McMurtry with the Lonesome Dove Saga. Uh, Lonesome Dove Saga actually would have gone somewhere else on a shelf if that fourth book matched. This shelf here is broadly stuff that I either don't care about or duplicates or copies that had literally nowhere else for me to put them, so I just kind of threw them here. Uh, I'm actually sad that that Lord of the Rings edition is there, but nonetheless, moving over, we have a few sci-fi things with Andy Weir, Ender's Game, uh, some fairy tales and classics over here with Grimm, and Jack London, Gone with the Wind, just, you know, stuff that I thought looked pretty nice over here, including Robert McCammon next to uh, Dante, which is all very cool. Moving down to the shelf below, we have, you know, more sort of nonsense with a lot of tan books with the Civil War trilogy, Robin Hobb, the little bit that I have. Some other books that I'm very keen on getting to at some point in the future, including Ilium, Ayn Rand, etc. Moving down to the shelf below is a lot of assorted stuff that I can't really spend the time to all point out here. Just a lot of things that just kind of fit wherever it fit. There's some sci-fi, there's some other random assorted fiction, there's some novellas, there's some really a lot of stuff here hard to point out but you know mostly stuff that again i just kind of put where i put because it looked okay as okay as i could frankly manage to get it given the circumstances 
finally on the bottom shelf will be another interesting collection of stuff we have frankenstein a couple other tall books like the star wars prequel trilogy novelizations dj's but dj butler's first witchy eye book a few other things like a favorite in american psycho a friend's favorite in lord of dark places a murakami which i want to try at some point this year and of course like endurance and the terror and brave new world and the asian saga which actually i actually kind of decided that the terror would look better on the other side of this collection even though it's more thematically similar to endurance but you know so i just deciding to move that over maybe i'll move endurance over to the other side because of the same reason uh <laughs> either way that is the end of this collection and the end of the tour so that wraps up the 2024 update of my bookshelf tour. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this turned out a little bit better than the last one did. And I hope there are plenty of things on my shelves that you were rather excited about. Uh, just note that now I've started collecting a little bit of a library on Audible and Kindle. So I'm actually missing some stuff that I would otherwise have included in the bookshelf tour. Maybe I'll include uh, an Audible and Kindle library next time I do one of these. Who knows but thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys on next tuesday with another episode of the book binge i forget exactly what's coming out there i think it's my review for no country for old men by cormac mccarthy so if you want to check that out that will be out on tuesday thank you again for watching i'll be back in the next one